All right, YouTube, we have the mid-season 10 Overwatch patch notes. I have Twitch chat here hitting me with some whale lords and some jewels and some fishes and some white duck asses because this is a pretty big patch. On the main channel, I just showed the side-by-side -side comparison and read the dev comment, but I didn't give you my personal thoughts on who I think is going to be strong and what's happening with this patch. So this one's more of a casual patch breakdown. From the top, we have the Overwatch 2 and Porsche collab. That's with the Diva skin and the Farah skins. Those are pretty cool if you want to buy those. Next, competitive play, demotion protection modifier demotion protection has been moved below the rank progress bar into the bar itself blah 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 blah. so basically when you get demotion protection you will not be told when your progress is below that skill divisions range so if you lose it the skill rank adjustment will only show the adjustment from that match instead of the net change okay so anybody here who has seen those gazillion screenshots on overwatch forums or you have lost a game and then you see you lose like 48 percent minus 50 percent and it says like volatile demotion protection all those modifiers it confused people because basically what they did is like if you're at like plat three three percent you lose a game you get demotion protection it puts you at zero percent but technically you're, you're already lost like minus 20 on the next one because it's you're at three it probably went down to like 80 percent on the previous one then you lose a second game in a row and then it goes down to like you know 58 percent so then you get a giant bar and it says you know all that stuff and it made people feel bad so now it looks like they're building it into the bar so it doesn't give look like a double loss so technically nothing is actually changing under the hood this is to stop confusing people okay Okay, new pressure modifier. This only applies if you're champion rank or low bronze, so like almost none of you. Extreme ends on the top 0.001 and the bottom 99.9999% thing. Is that why people winning games lost progress? Yes, because it calculated the previous one and you won less than the previous one, so it looked like a net loss. So sometimes they'd be like, how did I win a game and lose 3%? It's because you technically lost 23% and your next win gained you 20, but it looked like a net minus three. So it's that's it, nothing's actually changing under the hood. It's just trying to make it less confusing for people. So the high end for champion, if you're a champion player, it's like it's like you're, you're Magnus Carlsen. You're going to earn like three elo for winning. But if you lose, you lose a lot. And if you're a low bronze chess player like me, you gain a lot more than you lose. Basically, that's what it's doing. Grouping restrictions. This was actually added like two weeks ago in the hotfix patch because we had the super long queue times with wide and narrow. Now I can queue with friends because like me and flat sat in a wide queue. Apparently, even though we're like GM five and masters two, it's only three divisions. But I played Kingdom Hearts and I beat fucking Roxas in the two hours. Hours I sat in queue, but they fixed it, so now we can actually queue ranked. Champions can now group within one division. Okay, so this is on the super high end, doesn't apply to me. Next, matchmaking uh, update. Okay, this one might actually make people come up with new theories but let me explain. When a player is currently on a loss streak, the matchmaker will try to avoid putting the player on a team that is statistically calculated to have a lower chance of winning. Okay, so when you, we do matchmaking, it tries, there's no such thing as a true loser's queue, but basically every game, it calculates your MMR, and assuming everybody plays their best and is represents their skill well, most games are gonna be like 49.5% to a 50.5% you know, average rating. This team might have be slightly favored to win over the other one. They're saying if you're on a losing streak, it'll put you on the higher, and average you onto like the more favored side in hopes that you might actually win more. But this is assuming there's no lever, nobody disconnects, nobody's tilted and starts trolling. So like, obviously if you're on the 49.5% chance of winning team, you still have a chance to win, even if it's not as favorable. And that's obviously when you get like matches like that. I don't know what actually constitutes a reversal or uphill battle, maybe a 48-52 calculation. Like think about everyone, if they have a random SR number of the MMR of 25-52, 26-33, like you can't find some somebody who is exactly the same SR on each role every time. It's almost impossible to, or else you'll have like no matches. So they're basically just saying, if you're losing, it'll try to put you on the more winning side favored to win, but it's so like statistically minimal, but across millions of iterations of the game, maybe it'll help them a little bit. It's a small little joke, not a real conspiracy theory. Now, this is the big change for the game here, uh, which is armor health being reduced, uh, reverted to provide a flat damage reduction of five per projectile up to 50%, and then out of combat health regeneration from 20 health per second to 10 health per second plus 5% of max health. So from here, this is how armor worked in Overwatch 1. It basically means if you have armor, so most tanks in the game, not all of them, most tanks, Torbjorn, Brig, if you get hit by shotguns or small pellet damage, it will do less damage against armor. So it'll be weaker. Your armor is better against matchups like Tracer. This is an indirect Tracer nerf, Sombra, Reaper, Roadhog, Junker Queen, Diva. Who else has shotgun based pellets? Who has like small little bullets? Sojourn's primary fire technically is only like nine per bullet. Little instances of damage are gonna be weaker on armor now in this new patch. 
but burst damage, or Torb secondary fire, but burst damage is gonna be stronger against armor. So like Pharah, Junkrat, like Ash, big burst only loses minus five flat. Minus five flat is not as strong on burst, stronger on pellet damage. Does that make sense? So it changes your matchup uh, identity. So indirect nerf to like Tracer, buff to Hanzo. Beams should work like it is in Overwatch 1, where it's minus five uh, for the overall beam damage, not per tick, 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 where each it's minus five for each. If my Ana does 75 damage, I'll still only do seven, I'll do 70 on armor, which is actually quite a bit. It's not like each tss, 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 loses five. So it means Ash's Dynamite still does a lot of damage on armor instead of having a 30% reduction. So Ash is getting a lot of buffs here. Out of combat health regeneration, this is the global HP passive. It's actually still minus 30% for beams and no damage reduction for base for dots. So which tanks benefit from this? We can use Cactus Puppy's spreadsheet. I mentioned it in the main channel video, but I can just show you in just a moment here. So here's here's where it looks prettier for you. Diva Fusion Cannon. So here's, use the spreadsheet. We'll link it in the description. Find your main, look at your damage. This is what it's supposed to do, your raw damage. On, on, uh, this is what it looks like with the old armor, new armor with uh, headshot a passive which is we'll talk about in a moment. So TLDR is stuff like Reinhardt's Fire Strike does 120, 84 on the old armor because it was 30% reduction, now only does 115 because it's minus five, 36% buff. So what looks bad here? Let's look for red. What's red here? What's red? Sombra, remember I said Sombra? It's gonna be bad for Sombra because 5.6 turns into four because it's normally eight. So that's a bigger nerf. Uh, what else looks bad? Widow's Primary Fire, yeah, who cares? So Ana's Biotic Rifle used to be 70. It does 49 with 30% old armor reduction. Now it's actually stronger. It actually does what? 70, so dots do full damage. So it's not even a minus five. Dots just do normal damage. It has no damage, no impact on dots. Wow, that's actually kind of crazy. Okay, and then beams. You're looking at Echo Focusing Beam. No change. You've been verifying these in game, so there you go. So no damage reduction for dots, apparently. This is tested by a certified smart person cactus puppy, so I trust cactuses testing. No damage reduction for dots. There you go, 0% change. 0% change for Zarya. Technically the 100 energy with a 30% reduction would be 133, which means it's still for some reason getting a 30% reduction which is weird for beams. I don't know, okay. Well, maybe this will get uh, changed. Out of combat health regeneration from 20 HP per second to 10 HP plus 5%. So this, all this does is it makes Tracer and Baby Diva worse at regen. It's like 18.75 HP per second with 10 plus 5% of 175 HP. Barely any change. It's a net buff to 99% of the roster. It means tanks with 800 HP like Roadhog heal 10 plus 40 HP per second. They heal 50 HP per second out of combat instead of a flat 20. The global healing passive change is more of a nice quality of life change, uh, more so out of, uh, you know, when the team fight is over, so it's nice. I don't think people were complaining about this one. This one's fine. You know, this one's more of a bigger implication. Next, tank roll passive has 25% uh, damage reduction against critical headshot damage. So now, uh, and knockback resistance is gonna be increased from 30% to 50%. This one's big because it makes heroes like Roadhog, like I mentioned earlier. Roadhog is basically 25% immune. And like, if you're a good player, you should be headshotting Roadhog as often as you can whether you're like a sojourn or like, like a Baptiste, when you're farming a hog, you usually go for dinks. But the fact that you are mostly reducing this is crazy. It helps D.Va a lot too, because D.Va's head is right in the de drop dead center of the mech. It helps Roadhog a lot. Orissa, when she's not fortifying. So I was gonna say this actually makes Roadhog kind of crazy. Even though Roadhog's pellet damage is worse against armor, it just means you don't want to hook tanks, armory tanks, but Roadhog's best matchups are actually against like Doomfist, or like Ball, who don't have any armor. Ryan benefits in the mirror as well because he doesn't deal headshot damage, that's right. And his big swings and bursts do uh, more damage against armor. So in the Ryan swings, it'll do you know 115 instead of 120 instead of a 30% reduction. So in general, the indirect change with this, plus the roll passive makes Roadhog pretty good, D.Va a lot better, even though the damage is a little weaker against armor. It means don't focus tanks as much. You can just punish the other heroes. That's the takeaway point. So Junker Queen, getting a couple of buffs because Junker Queen's burst of damage from the Hirsch. Her primary fire with the pellets is gonna be worse against tanks, but they're making commanding shout be, uh, able to be used while using other abilities. So have you guys ever popped like your rampage time for the reckoning in the long ass wind up animation, then you die at the at the animation. Now you can you do that and then pop your commanding shout to give yourself some over health right at the beginning to ensure your safety. Do you know if this affects Mauga's burn? I think Cactus covered the, the burn interaction here. Mauga force crit, there you go. 
80, 80%. You can check the spreadsheet. So that's a big buff for Shout. Also on a shorter cooldown, that'll help uh, Queen quite a bit there. Sigma being able to no longer need line of sight of the center of the effect is crazy because it counts for the entire sphere of the hitbox. If you're in like a closed area, like, I don't know, like Route 66 second the saloon, you can actually have a person up top and still pick them up. This one's a clip. I'm just picking this up here underneath, but because the radius of the circle is still there, you can pick up bots like this. Look, I literally aimed off the map. So if I'm inside a building on a map, and I'm trying to just 1v1 someone, I might accidentally pick people up through all the walls. You can flux behind the window on the bots. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And yes, putting Life Weaver Tree in the middle doesn't cancel it anymore. There's a lot of ways to, to do this. Junker Town, last point, you can ult the defender spawn. Yeah, through the walls. In any case, that's like a big implication there. There's a video that I made a long time ago, three years ago, guys, with the help of the workshoppers. So you can actually see, this is probably still true with what the, the hitbox of uh, Sigma's Flux looks like. Like that that's how high it goes i know it's kind of cut off here the pickup radius is the i think the sphere hey there's cactus puppy right there we made this in 2021 wow very nice wrecking ball getting a lot of buffs here uh fireball damage 50 to 60 movement lockout duration increase from 0.5 to 0.75 that's pretty big it means when you uh you can use abilities but when you're pulled up into the air in the arc of the slam you can't move any of your directional buttons until after uh 0.75 seconds which is pretty long because lucio's boop got buffed with lockout duration and that made lucio really good because you can't counter move against it which basically forces you to almost fall into the minefield every time it already does but it's going to be even better now and the minefield damage got scaled up from 130 to 165 to probably help uh, accommodate for the bigger hp pools in season nine and the knockback went from five meters to 10 meters if you touch one mine you're getting booped back far enough to probably fall into a second mine and then it'll probably just uh, cascade so that's uh, that's a big one so the ball is going to be pretty good Zarya's grab is getting buffed. Six to seven meters is good. Four seconds instead of three and a half, so they're grabbed a little longer. Yeah, so ball is actually pretty good. I think Sigma's good. Roadhog is low key really good this patch too because of the headshot reduction. Diva's good too. And the biggest losers in this patch, probably Mauga, Risa maybe. Honestly, Winston doesn't seem that bad too because Winston does true damage against armor and he doesn't he bypasses all uh, headshot stuff too. I don't actually don't know what the meta will be, but like it, on paper, it seems like a lot of these heroes are pretty damn good. Ball wins here, but because of Wrecking Ball's shotguns are uh, or primary fire is all small little pellets against the tank matchup, it won't be good. But I mean, Ball's rolling into the back line anyways, so hard to say. I don't know what the meta will be. Junkrat, a buff from the frag launcher to go to 120 to 125, which means you can two shot people. But if you do one shot into a mine, it still won't kill you because the mine is only uh, what, 120? So 125 plus 120 won't be able to kill, unfortunately, still, which is good. This is a buff. This is a decent buff for Junkrat. It's only five damage, but it's enough to change a break point for the back-to-back -back shot. This will probably be worse for lower rank players who somehow get hit by two random spam nades from Junkrat across the map. Because Junkrats will spam in the same area in, in silver games. And then people stand there, take one, and be like, ow, did I move? I don't know where that came from. And then they just, just get hit by a second one and they just die. Probably won't change much for Junkrats in the high end, but low rank players might feel this a little bit, getting two tapped randomly. Echo. I'm in, I'm surprised Echo actually randomly got a small buff here where the duplicate ultimate uh, gain multiplier was increased from 4 to 4.5. It just means you can build your ultimate a little quicker when you dupe. I don't think Echo needed this, but I think Echo performs really low and bad in low ranks. But I mean, Echo's a high skill ceiling hero because like you got to know what the other heroes do if you duplicate them. This is like me playing Loki in fucking Marvel Rivals and I can sit there and fucking duplicate somebody, but I don't even know all the heroes kits yet. So like I probably shouldn't play that hero. High skill ceiling hero. Anyways, Echo is still really good in my opinion. Hanzo, this buff is like nothing. Like what? I, when they said Hanzo buff, I thought they were going to allow him to charge his bow while wall climbing again, like a quality of life change. I mean, this does something during the ultimate, which means the speed of the dragon's a little faster, so it's not a glorified zoning tool, but like, really, this is pretty much nothing, in my opinion. Maybe you'll get some cheesier kills here and there, but like, I would say it's more a buff than nerf. I can't even see a situation where this is a, a I mean, it's a nerf where like, you can't zone out the area as long because the dragon passes by faster, but there's a chance you catch somebody way easier now when you shoot it onto a wall. It flies by faster, so the area isn't zoned off as longer, but I think the value will come for if you confirm a kill, that's already like better value for sure. But in any case, this is a pretty like nothing burger compared to improving his like out of ultimate like uh, kit. 
where there's more uptime, like there's more cases where, you know, charging your bow and wall climbing and keeping that charge will probably help Hanzo players more than this. But I do think Hanzo's pretty meh, like C tier. And then Brig gets a uh, shield bash reset, where if you bash, pop your ult and bash again, you can do it twice. And they're saying it's not as lethal because in season nine, everybody got more HP, so you can't really one shot. But I will say if, if you have a nano boost, I think Anna, Anna Brig, nanoing Brig, because Anna's better on this patch because her dots do better on armor now on this patch. I think if you nano brig, what's the what's the break point? 50% more for this entire combo. Let's see. Someone with no armor. If I do this, boom, 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 boom. It's like 215. I did that kind of slow, but 215 times 50% is like what? 325. There's a little bit of a rally cast time, but like it'll be over 300 damage if you're nano boosted. If, if, if you don't have nano, then you miss out on the second shield bash and the stun CC. So it's like 75 less damage in the combo. It's pretty lethal if you nano the Brig, like um, getting two bashes. It's still like not gonna, it, hopefully if it's used right, it'll be like in a very important situation where you confirm a kill. But how often are you gonna, you're rallying to start fights for your team or you need it in the specific situation to save somebody. It'll be in some scenarios where it can certainly get you a kill that you wouldn't otherwise be able to, but it's not gonna like change more of like your tempo. If you're a bad brig with bad macro and positioning, bad pack management, bad raw positioning, like the reset is crazy for that one specific time you have your ultimate, which is like twice around. And it, yeah, it doesn't really, you can't really animation cancel because of the cast time. That's right. So if I like bash here, there's still like, locks you into the stuff so it's not as quick so i don't know i think brig it's not going to be game changing anybody who's trying to clickbait saying brig is broken with this is probably overreacting a little bit like it's certainly good but not as like crazy as it looks on paper it's nice in some scenarios a couple of bug fixes but that's about it for the patch the biggest thing is the overall tank changes hopefully tanks feel a lot better for those who main tank let me know what you guys think that's my patch breakdown see you later